Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to Mathematics with Shahab Yaqub. Now in this particular video, let me solve February, March 2025 variant 62 paper. So let's get started. Question number one. It says the random variables X and Y have independent distribution, normal distribution, mean, variance, mean, variance for X and Y respectively. Find the probability X minus Y is less than 15. Let's introduce a new variable, which is X minus Y. We will subtract the mean. So 44 minus 30, that comes out to be 14. And then we will add up the variances. 16 plus 9 is 25. Once we have achieved this, we will just proceed as before. So the square root of variance goes down. And this thing over here, that is mu. So therefore, z is what? z is x minus mu over sigma. So this is a question of linear combination. We get this value as 0 0.2. Go to the table, read of the table. When z is 0 0.2, find the corresponding p-value, which is 0.579, and that is the answer. Pretty basic question. Question number two. Now it says a researcher records the time t seconds taken by adult to complete a questionnaire. The results for a random sample of 60, so let me highlight it, 60 adults who completed this questionnaire is summarized as follows. You have n, you have sigma t, you have sigma t squared. Find an unbiased estimate of population mean and show that the unbiased estimate of population variance is this much. So this is unbiased estimate of population mean. This is unbiased estimate of population variance. We know that unbiased estimate of population mean is the same thing as sample mean, and we get this answer. Unbiased estimate of population variance, it's n over n minus 1 sample variance, and this is the answer. So that is also pretty basic. Now, over here, hypothesis. What does it say? It says in the past, the population mean time was 62.4 seconds. So use that as mu. Test at the two person significance level. So use the z value 2.054. Whether the population mean time for this year is less than 62.4 seconds. So that is the alternative hypothesis. That is lesser. And do we have a sample value? Yes, the sample value is the sample mean which was given right over here from the previous part. Naturally, both parts are linked. Now it's a sampling question. So therefore, x bar minus mu sigma square over n under root, we find the calculated z value. So z value calculated is negative 2.242. Does this value lies inside critical region? Yes, it does. Because the boundary starts with 2.0 and it lies inside critical region. So therefore, reject H0. Except H1, right in the context of the question, there is sufficient evidence at two-person significance level that the population mean time has decreased. That is it. Question number three. The random variable x has a Poisson distribution. Find the probability x is greater than or equal to 3. So greater than or equal to 3, always a good idea to draw a number line. This is 0, 1, 2, 3. Greater than or equal to 3, all the way till infinity. Subtract probability of 0, 1, and 2. So that is probability of 0, 1, and 2. Subtract it from 1, you get this answer. Find the probability sum of three independent values of x is between such and such. So this is a concept of linear combination of Poisson variable. When we are talking about three independent values, all the three means are added. So basically, this is 3 times 1.5. It's 4.5. We know that expectation of x is the same thing as lambda. So is variance of x. Maybe we will be using this knowledge in one of those parts. So now over here, we calculate the probability using Poisson between 3 and 5. This is for 3, this is for 4, this is for 5, and that is the answer. Now over here, yes, we are going to use that knowledge. Now it says the sum of a large number of n of values of x is denoted by t. Use a suitable approximation. It's already Poisson. So the only suitable thing is normal approximation to Poisson. We know that expectation of x is lambda, so is variance of x. 
and we should know that lambda should be greater than 15 for this to happen. Over here, since it says a large number, so therefore I'm using this thing. Correct two, three significant figure. We have to use this inequality and get this answer. Find the value of n. So T follows the Poisson distribution 1.5 n because n is multiplied with 1.5 just the same way n was multiplied with 3 over here. Large number, this is the mean, this is the variance probability t greater than 330. Now, the first tricky part is that do not forget continuity correction. 330, 330.5, 329.5, this is not inclusive, choose 330.5. And then you realize this probability is less than 50%. So therefore, flip the inequality, get the, the probability is this one over here. This is the corresponding z value, standardize, equate, and let's work it out. Now the new thing starts over here. Sometimes the examiner loves pure maths too much. So this is new in the sense that we are using disguise quadratic equation to solve this thing. So knowledge of P1 is coming over here. So now let me make the substitution that as C is equals to 1.5 in the whole thing square root. Therefore, C square is this. And then you simplify, you get this equation. We use the quadratic formula. You get either C is this or C is this. So now over here, it's about squaring. When we solve this one, we get N is equals to 200, a nice integer. When we solve this one, we are getting a decimal value. Since it's only asking about the value of N. So therefore, I'll then accept this one. And I'll reject this one. Got the idea? So it was a disguised quadratic equation with normal approximation, with continuity correction. So I think this was the most tricky question of this particular paper. Question number four. It says the diagram shows the graph of probability density function f of a random variable x. And this is a PDF. Uh, the graph is a straight line from such and such where A and B are positive constant. Elsewhere, fx is zero. Show that B is this. And given that expectation is 1.2, find the value of A. Now, uh, what I did over here is that since it's a PDF, so we know that area under graph represents probability. And since it's a PDF, it should equal it to 1. So this area equals to 1. This is a trapezium. These two are parallel sides. This is the height, half sum of parallel sides multiplied by height. Therefore, B comes out to be 1 minus A. Pretty nice basic coordinate geometry question. Given that the expectation of X is this much. So now over here, I need the equation of a line. I found the gradient. Y intercept was written. So let me highlight this thing. So that is the gradient over here. That is the Y intercept. That is the equation of a line. Now take this equation of a line and hold for a second, take this equation of a line and then multiply with X and create something new. So X into X is X square and this is X and the constants are over there. Now integrate and the integration is basic. It's just the constants that look scary. So X square becomes X cube over three. X becomes X square over two. Plug in the limit zero and two. It's a good thing when we plug in zero, this will become zero, this will become zero. So therefore, just plug in the upper limit, simplify, solve. Yes, it's a bit of O-level maths over here. And A comes out to be 0 0.2. So that is the concept of CRV, the second part. There is also a CRV third part, more pure math. And this time it's P3. And we should know that integral of cosine x dx, that is sine x plus a constant of integration. And whatever is the coefficient of x, that comes out in divides. But we don't have to worry because the coefficient is 1. Now it says uh, this is the PDF. It lies between negative pi by 2 and pi by 2. So I took the liberty and drew a curve. Find the value of c such that t between negative c and positive c is half. So now there is symmetry between this value and this value. This is one. Therefore, negative C is on this side. Positive C is on this side. This whole area is 50%. Therefore, 25% here, 25% over here. So why should I integrate from negative C to C when I can comfortably integrate from 0 to C and equal it 2.25? 
So therefore, zero till C cosine T dt equals to one fourth integral of cosine as positive sine. These are the limits. Take half on the other side. So that is how this is happening. That's this two goes over here. This four is over here. It simplifies. So two over four is half. Sine C is half. We are looking for an angle between zero and pi by two. And the beautiful angle is pi by six. So therefore the value of C is pi by six. This thing is done. Question number five. It says Amir believes that 20% of his students at college are left-handed. That's his belief. His friend believes that the true proportion is less. Amir plans to use binomial to test the null hypothesis against the alternative. It's a lower tail test. He decides to choose 35 students at random. That's the number of trials. If three or fewer of these students are left-handed, Amir will reject his belief, find the significance level of the test. So this is binomial. This is number of trial. This is probability of success, H0, H1. This thing over here, if three or fewer are left-handed, Amir will reject his belief. This is Amir's belief. That is H0. And this is his friend's belief. So if Amir rejects his belief, he will accept friend relief, uh, not really belief. So this is a reject H0. That is the critical region or the rejection region. So significance level is the probability of significance level is the probability of the critical region. That's also type one error. That is what they have asked on the next page. So that's the probability of critical region. Let me plug in the values. What's the probability of success? 0 0.2. Let me write 0 0.2 all over here. Let me show you the working in detail. This is 0 0.8. This is 0 0.8. This is 0 0.8. This is 0 0.8. And the powers. So this is 0, 1, 2, and 3. This is 35, 34, 33. 32, already done the calculation. That is the answer. That is the true significance level. True significance level, we write this thing in percentage. Probability, we have a habit of writing in decimals. Probability of type 1 error is the same thing as probability of significance level. Now it says, it is now given that the true value of P is this much. Find the probability of type 2. What is the definition of type 2? The definition of type 2 is except uh, H0 when H0 is false. When H0 is false, H1 is true. Therefore, they have given us a new value of probability of success, which is 0 0.05. And it's the acceptance region. So therefore, it should be pointing in the other direction. Critical region, rejection region was X less than or equal to 3. Acceptance region is X greater than or equal to 4. That is 1 minus probability X is less than or equal to 3. So let me write over here, how much is this? This is 5%. So this is 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and so on. Powers are 0, 1, 2, and 3. Over here, this is 0 0.95, 0 0.95, 0 0.95, 0 0.95. Powers 35, 34, 33, 32. And this is the answer that we are getting. That's probability of type 2. Question number six, Nikki is investigating the views of students at her school about school sports facilities. Students, school, school sports facilities. She plans to give a survey of a, to a sample of students. Nikki's friends say the survey is about sports. So you should choose a sample of students from the school sports team. Sounds logical. Let's see how it is. State with the reason whether you agree with Nikki's friend. No, I don't agree. Because it's not necessary that only the team players will be playing sports. There are those who are amateurs. They're not in the sports team, but they love to use the school facility. So students who are not in the sports team also play sports. Therefore, they should also be included in the survey. They should also be part of the survey. The survey should be more broad-based. That is what I believe in. So now over here, Nikki chooses an appropriate random sample of 60 students. So this is an appropriate random sample of 60. She finds that 45 of the students think that the sports facilities are good. 
calculate an approximate 95% confidence interval for the proportion of student who thinks that the sports facilities are good. So now over here, this thing is about this concept that is uh, PS and this is PS plus Z square root PSQS over N and this is PS minus Z square root PSQS over N. So we have to use this thing for confidence interval for proportion, population proportion. So now over here, this is PS, this is QS, this is N, Z value is 1.96, 95% in the middle, 2.5% on the sidelines, read for 95 plus 2.5, that is 97.5, very common, easy to remember value. And then apply the formula. These are two answers. This is the lower bound. This is the upper bound. Got it? Lower confidence limit, upper confidence limit. Now it says for a different investigation. So now let me highlight this. For a different investigation, Nikki uses another large random sample to calculate a 99% confidence interval and an X person confidence interval. Now it says the width of the 99% confidence interval is double the width of X person confidence interval. Got it? So just focus on this. The width of 99% confidence interval, let me use the red marker over here. The width for 99%, the red marker, my bad. That is 2 times 2.576. How do I get this value for 99%? Use 99.5. Just the same way as this. So 99 in the middle, half percent on the left, half percent on the right. Read for 99.5. No need to draw another diagram. Go to the table. That strip at the bottom with nine major values. That is the sixth value. So this is 2.576, this is PSQS over N, this is PSQS over N. We don't know what is the Z value for X percent. So let me also write over here, PSQS over N, PSQS over N, this will cancel out. The whole square root will cancel out when we equate them. How will we equate them? We will say one value is double of the other, the 97 confidence interval width is double the width of the other. So that doubling thing is over here. And this is the red one over here. The square root cancel. This is the blue one over here. That is the blue one over here. And then we work it out. So now over here, let me change the color to black. So ZX is this much. Now, again, just hold your horses and think very calmly. So now over here, stop. This thing has to be, this is the X person confidence interval. This is step one. So this is step one. Go to the table, read off the probability, you get this. Subtract the probability from one, you get 9.88%. So now over here, this is step two. That is, this is 9.88%, this is 9.88%, how much is X? So the calculation of step two is over here. So this green one, that is the X person thing. That comes out to be 80.24. Have they asked us to round off to the integer value? Not as such. So 80.24 is correct. If they would have asked for an integer value, that means it's an 80 person confidence interval. Normally confidence interval are given as integers. So that's all from my side for your preparation for May, June, 2025. S2 paper, and this was February, March, 2025, variant 62. Wish you the best of luck for your exams. Take care, everyone.